So I recently picked up the new base model M1 Mac mini to kind of serve as a temporary video editing computer until the new pro model Mac devices from Apple drop, hopefully later this year. And man, I've been thoroughly impressed at just how capable this tiny and very affordable computer has been. If you guys want to check out my review on it, I'll throw a card in the corner and leave a link to it in the description. But one thing that you need to know about the Mac mini is that it comes with a computer and power cable. That's it. And with that lean package, it kind of organically led me to put together a new setup. And I had one goal in mind. Keep it simple, keep it minimal. Now, before we jump into the review, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And in case you're a tech junkie like me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the reviews. Now, the Mac mini doesn't come with a monitor and it's kind of mandatory to have one in order to use. What's awesome about it is that it can support a 6K display. And look, the new Apple Pro Display XDR is super nice, but man, I didn't have 5Gs just laying around. So instead, I'm using my trusty 27-inch LG 5K ultrafine display that I've had for a while now, and I still love this panel. It comes in at a very respectable 5K resolution, which is great for consuming HD content, but also for editing high-resolution video. It's not the most modern-looking display, but I do like the simplicity of it. Yes, I wish the bezels were a bit smaller, but I like the all-black, no-frills design. It's pure functionality all the way. The monitor's height can easily be adjusted to find the ideal position, and it even has a really well-made tilt function to assist with ergonomics. One of the main reasons why I love this panel, particularly for the Mac Mini, is that it connects via Thunderbolt 3, which allows for the native 5K resolution, as well as audio for the built-in speakers. But dude, it also comes with an additional three USB-C ports, so it's really great to have the additional I.O. built in. But at the end of the day, the main reason why I love this monitor so much is the image quality. LG really nailed it with this display. It supports the P3 color gamut, it can get insanely bright if you need it to, and it's crazy how sharp and clean the image quality is. It's seriously so beautiful. This has been the perfect sub for the 5K IMAX display, especially for when I'm editing video, and it's a fantastic pairing with the Mac Mini. Now it's not cheap though, so it's not great if you're on a budget, but if you're a content creator editing high-res photos or videos, the LG Ultrafine is a workhorse of a display, and to me it's worth the investment. Now the Mac Mini also does not come with any peripherals, and unfortunately you're not going anywhere with this computer until you get some. As far as this setup is concerned, for my keyboard, I'm using the Keychron K2 Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. I reviewed this a while back, and it's still my favorite keyboard to date. I absolutely love the design. It has this retro look that matches the rest of the setup, but it's also loaded with a lot of great technology. It connects via Bluetooth, so I don't have to worry about any wires, and it keeps the setup super clean. It's specifically designed for both Windows and Mac, and has a built-in switch to change up between the two. And man, I'm just a sucker for mechanical keys. They're so much more engaging than the mushy membrane keyboards. And call me annoying, but I do prefer the blue switches. Yes, they're super loud and obnoxious, but I love that hard tactile bump. And someone who actually remembers the 80s, I find the clacking of the blues kind of refreshing. Here's a quick sound sample of how the keys sound. Now this keyboard is also backlit and does that whole RGB thing. Personally, I never turn on the lights. It just takes up battery, and I think it looks cleaner with the lights off. Overall, it's such a solid keyboard that not only looks great, but has also stood the test of time, and I could totally understand why it's so popular. Now when it comes to navigating around the OS, I'm a true trackpad junkie. I choose it over a mouse any day. So I decided to go with the Apple Magic Trackpad 2 in this space gray. I love the gestures. I'm way better at editing video with this. It's completely wireless and the battery lasts forever. And the dark space gray color matches the setup very well. At the end of the day, it's reliable, it's well-made, and it gives me everything that I need in a simple, minimal way. Now, unlike the monitor and peripherals, the M1 Mac Mini does come with the speaker built in, but my god, it's terrible. The 5K LG Ultrafine does come with built-in speakers too that are okay, way better than the Mac Mini, but as audio is a big part of my video edit, I needed to get some dedicated speakers for my workflow. I ultimately chose to go with the Edifier R1280T Bookshelf Studio monitors, mainly for two reasons. First, these speakers have stellar reviews on Amazon, and two, they're not that expensive. And honestly, for the money, they sound pretty damn good. They plug into the Mac Mini using the built-in headphone jack, and the sound quality is exponentially better than what the computer can produce natively. I took the front plates off to expose the speakers themselves. I think it adds more character to the overall look. It has this really nice wood finish, giving it that retro vibe that fits really well with the setup. 
And man, I'm kind of blown away at the performance of these guys. There's a ton of value to be had here. And true to the Edifier name, these speakers are robust, easy to use, and most importantly, ultra reliable. Now, a major issue that I have with the Mac Mini is that the base model only comes with 256 gigabytes of internal storage. That's enough for maybe two videos before I run out of space. Now, one solution for both speed and storage has been the Samsung T5 SSDs. I have a ton of these guys because they're super portable and easy to use. It has incredibly fast read and write speeds when plugged into the Thunderbolt 3 port. And what's awesome is that I can edit my videos directly on it, which saves me a ton of space on my Mac Mini's hard drive. Now, the other solution that solves storage space and another problem with the Mac Mini, limited I.O., is this USB Type-C hub by Leasif. This thing is really well designed. It's made out of stainless steel that has the same finish as the Mac Mini and cut precisely to fit underneath it for optimal efficiency. It allows you to have some very often used ports in the front of the computer, which is super handy and a lot less annoying than having them all in the back. All you have to do is connect it using the included USB Type-C cable, and it gives you two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, and most importantly for me, an SD and micro SD card reader. The Mac Mini doesn't have an SD card reader at all, which is tough for a content creator, so this talk provides what I need in a convenient way without having to rely on weird dongles hanging around messing with the aesthetics of my setup. But the real awesome thing about this hub is that it not only has all this I.O., it actually has a built-in hard drive reader in the center where you could install an unused hard drive for additional storage. I so happen to have a 480GB SSD that I bought a while back that isn't being used. All I had to do was unscrew this latch, simply pop in the SSD, and once I've read this thing up, the hard drive populated immediately. This is so convenient to have to either back up my OS or use for overflow storage, and I love how this one device solves two big issues that I have with this computer. This to me is a must-have if you're planning on using the Mac Mini as a serious content creating device, and you can snag this up on Amazon for only 80 bucks. So that's it for my ultra-minimalist M1 Mac Mini desk setup. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Again, if you're interested in picking up any of the stuff I covered, links will be in the description below. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.